I thought it was time to do a new Psyche video. And I wanted to put the old face cam on so that you and I can look at each other in the eye. It has a more, I suppose, meaningful conveyance than if you just listen to an audio and you don't see my face. What I'm going to talk about in this Psyche video is something that everyone has the opportunity to do, and that is to make choices. This ties into presumption assumption. If I see someone crossing the road and there's a car coming and they're in danger of getting hit by a car, I will yell, hey, stop, or something. And I just might save their life. However, it's the context of the situation. If I see someone, for example, uh, let's see, what's a good example I could use? If I see someone eating a candy known as Sour Patch Kids every day, all day, and that's all they eat. They don't eat anything else, just Sour Patch Kids. I'm not going to yell, hey, stop, because sugar is going to eventually kill them. Again, it's the context of the situation. If you feel the need to tell someone else what they should or shouldn't do with their life, then that presumes and assumes that you know better than they do which you very, mel, uh, very well might, depending upon the situation. However, do you have a position to do so? If you are a blood relative, maybe you have that position. If you are a good friend, a lifelong friend, maybe you have that position. A parent, maybe you have that position. But if you're a stranger... What position do you really hold to tell other strangers what they should or shouldn't do with their lives? It's like the old, uh, all right, let's go into the war on drugs. How about that? That's a good topic to go into. Why are drugs not legal in North America? Meaning, why are there, okay, let me, that was a bad turn of phrase there. Why are some drugs illegal and others not? Why is heroin illegal? Can't even use it for medicinal purposes, but other opiates are legal. Now you could say, uh, what's the name of that? Uh, Dilaudid. Dilaudid is like pharmaceutical grade heroin, one could say. That's legal. Why isn't heroin legal? Why are methamphetamine salts, or actually the more correct name would be, the correct name would be amphetamine salts, legal, but crystal methane, crystal methamphetamine is not. Adderall, i.e. amphetamine salts, Basically, pharmaceutical grade crank or crystal meth. Why is one legal and one is not? Why do folks separate alcohol from drugs? You know the saying, oh, stay away from drugs and alcohol. Well, alcohol is a drug. Why are we separating that? Why are some drugs considered to be more dangerous than others. Why is marijuana labeled a narcotic when heroin and cocaine are also narcotics? Is marijuana really that dangerous to be put in that category? 
There's so many inconsistencies in this fiction system having to do with this topic. Myself personally, my position is, if you, as an adult, choose to put something in your body, whatever that is, that's your choice. It's not up to me to tell you not to do it. It's not up to me to judge you as a quote-unquote good or bad person as for what you're doing. That's you. Now, if you are harming me in the process of doing that, for example, if you are inebriated, you've been having a little bit too much more, too much hooch, and you're stumbling around and you're going to get in your car, I'm probably going to stop you from doing that. Okay? If you are trying to rob my house because you want drug money, I'm probably going to stop you. Maybe for good. But other than that, if you're not harming anything by doing what you're doing, who am I to say whether it's good or bad for you to do what you're doing? We only get one chance at this particular life. What we choose to do with it is up to us. It's not up to me to tell you what to do with your one chance. Now, the caveat to that is if you come to me and ask me for advice, you want my counsel, well, then I'll, I'll most certainly give it to you. <clears throat> But other than that, it's not up to me to influence or modify your choices. Another example, and I'll bring this into the correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar domain. Back in 2018, after Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller had passed away, Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould put on what we now know as the Reno Seminars. I don't know how many of you have watched these videos. But in these videos, it's basically because now the master, Russell's teacher, has passed on. Now Russell is moving into position to modify and make changes in the way he does things as he is the only sole remaining part of that partnership. Get it? Partnership? Part? Get it? And a caveat to this is I will say that Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller has said in the past that he and Russell are two. And two is certification. Two. One is opinion. So if you have two, he and Russell and you take one away, now you just have an opinion. So that's the situation with Russell. And what happens with opinions? They can be argued with. That's what happens in the foreign vessels and dry docks, in the courts. People argue all day long about opinions. When you see rulings and so on and so forth published, and I subscribe to uh, Supreme Court emails and things like that. It always says in the, in the subject bar of the email, judges' opinions. Publish judges' opinions because they're opinions. So Russell, in these renewal seminars, is basically telling people they're not allowed to use quantum grammar anymore because he is the sole owner of this and he gives some registered number as proof folks how can you claim a correct copyright on a correct grammar when your contract does not contain correct grammar 
It doesn't add up, does it? So he's there telling folks that you win or lose by how you choose. And he pretty much, it's sort of a low-key veiled threat that if people don't have his thumbprint, his autograph, his authority, that they're going to get into big, big trouble for using his technology. <laughs> Guess what? It's 2024. 2024 is almost over. Guess how much trouble I've gotten into for using correct sentence structure. Guess how much trouble I've gotten into for teaching hundreds of folks all over the earth this technology. Guess how much trouble I've gotten into for publishing about a thousand correct sentence structure videos on this YouTube channel. Guess how much trouble. I'll give you a hint. It starts with the number zero. Zero trouble. Why? Because I protect myself. How do I protect myself? By being grammatically and psychologically correct as much as I can. To phrase that a little bit differently, I cultivate correctness. I try to be 100% correct. Whether I succeed 100% of the time, that's up to other people to determine. But I try. I try really hard. I keep my mind open. If people are saying I'm wrong or something's off about what I'm doing, I genuinely take that into consideration, take a look at it, and if they go about it the correct way, I consider it. And if it is a mistake on my part, I correct it in the public. Who else does that? Name one person out there in this venue, in this domain that does that. I can't think of one. I really can't. Not even the students that I have that have created their own YouTube channels will come out in public and admit they made a mistake. As far as I know, I'm the lone wolf on this one. But you see, it doesn't really matter to me because that's, I guess because I have closure on the grammar and I have closure on the psychology of the grammar in that cultivating humility makes me impervious to ego in this context, in this context. Because I know that if I make a mistake, and someone points it out to me and they offer solutions or how to fix it, I do it and I give them credit and I move on. And that's the beauty of it. It's not a big deal. There are folks out there with egos so big, they just, for whatever reason, cannot even consider that they're wrong about something. How many times have I heard Russell or anybody else say that, oh, they're so humble. They're still learning. They're students. But you don't ever see that reflected in their videos, do you? You don't ever see them do that, do you? I haven't. So to get back to the whole choice thing, that is what I choose to do. What I choose to do with my life is my choice just like you. I know that there are folks out there that think that, why are we all fighting? Why are we all arguing? We should all just join together, unify, and fight the man. Why do we have all these petty arguments? Oh, so that type of individual wants to overlook things. They don't care about being correct. They don't care about being humble. They just want everybody on the same team and everything to be hunky-dory. That's not how it works. That is not how it works. 
If you want to 100% correct yourself and take authority over yourself and navigate autonomously, that concept ain't going to work. There is no saving the world. I mean, in, in a modern context, not the par se context. In the modern concept, concept of saving the world. We are the world. We are the children. Blah, 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 blah. <coughs> Did the world ask to be saved? Did the people ask to be led by the Pied Piper down the road? Someone who's going to finally save them from all of this tyranny, all of this pain and suffering. No, actually, let's use the analogy of religion, the Christian religion. Who's the shepherd? Jesus is the shepherd. Who's the flock? The Christians, his followers. They're the sheep. He's a good shepherd, shepherding the sheep. What happens to sheep? They get sheared and then ultimately get slaughtered by the shepherd. And if you're okay with that, again, your choice. It's your choice, folks. Wow, I've kind of run the gamut here, gone from drugs to religion. It's kind of the same thing, isn't it? Kind of the same thing. What do they say? Religion is the opiate of the masses. I guess, but at least with, with opiates, they probably get something out of it, right? And a lesson learned from it. With religion, it's a little bit harder because you have to use your imagination a bit more, don't you? Yes, you do. So I just thought I'd put this out there um, because so many folks on the internet, and I know there's no stopping this. I know there's no stopping this. There's no way to stop this because people love to do this. On the internet, people will go into a comment section or comments field and tell other people what they should or shouldn't do. Well, you should be doing this. Well, you're stupid for doing that. Why did you do that? Everybody makes choices. And everybody gets the consequences. So keep that in mind. When you make your choice, the consequence will come. The end result, the conclusion will find you. And how you handle that determines the next step, the next rung in the ladder, or the next path you take. So you got to be careful with what you choose. It's, that's why it's good to have a set of principles to make these choices. And I've said this ad nauseum. People are probably sick of me saying this. Position of peace and neutrality. Maintenance of rule one, rule equal. The balance of the honor and the grace. If you keep these things in mind, your choices become a little easier. And I'll add a little bit of fourth way Gurdjieff wisdom here as well. I think to paraphrase, Gurdjieff said, there are three things to consider when making a choice about something. Number one, does it benefit you? Number two, does it benefit your inner circle, your immediate family or the folks that you have trust counts with? Your little circle, does it benefit them? And three, does it benefit the rest of existence? If you can answer yes to those three things, then by all means, whatever it is you're doing, do it. I mean, if it's positive performance. Even two out of three might be okay. But if you only get one of those, then you probably shouldn't do it. Unless you're some type of martyr for some reason. If you like this video and you'd like to see more of it type shit, more of me looking at you and speaking to you, although I'm not looking at anything except myself and the computer screen right now, 
but we can pretty much, you know, use our imaginations to imagine we're looking at each other in the eye. If you like this type of content, I'll definitely do more of it. You could even add some uh, topics you'd like me to talk about. Because I, you know, I do like to talk, obviously, or I wouldn't have this YouTube channel with a thousand or so videos. Feel free to step up and type it in the comments field or email me, whatever you want to do. I appreciate you joining me. Thank you. Thank you.